My name is Adam Pittman, I'm with Esri, and I'll be your host for the next 75 minutes, taking us into lunch. Uh, we have, not that the whole plenary is not fun, but I think this is the fun part. We see all the demonstrations, uh, different topics of, of interest, and you're gonna see a lot, of, uh, a lot of stuff, so there'll be a lot of action coming through here. This is the largest gathering of GIS professionals in the world. And I'll tell you a little bit about, I don't know, not dirty laundry, but about Esri and how we work on the backside. We have about 50 people here from Esri uh, that have come uh, from Redlands, from San Antonio, uh, all over the United States to support this conference. And interesting enough, we have a large queue of folks that request to come and support this conference. So it's actually kind of a, we get, unfortunately, I have to say, nope, you can't come to support this conference. Uh, but we have a long list of people that do. Now, I just got to thinking, I was like, why do so many people request to come to Houston to work a conference? And I think I have the answer. Not only is it the largest group of GIS professionals for petroleum in the world, but our conference has been in conjunction with the Petroleum User Group now for 27 years in a row. 27 years this has been happening in Houston. This group has been getting together. So all of the folks at Esri that have been around, they all know you, you know them, and these folks from Esri enjoy coming out, visiting with you. So for the next 75 minutes, you're gonna see uh, what I would uh, put into four categories of presentations. Uh, we're talking about how to use the platform and how to help you enable the platform across your organization. Uh, we're gonna show you uh, ways that you can deliver simple maps and applications uh, to service all the people within your organization that you're supporting. We're gonna show you ways to enhance everyday workflows using ArcGIS and ways that you can gain new business insights to help uncover things that people just couldn't see or have context to before. So I have a special guest that's gonna join me here in a moment, uh, but this special guest represents an organization who has done all four of those things. They've delivered a platform globally to support their entire organization and everybody that wants to access maps uh, for the company. They have delivered simple maps to everybody that wants to access those maps. They are enhancing and improving everyday uh, workflows, everyday business workflows. And lastly, they are helping to deliver new business insights uh, to users across their entire organization. So to introduce our special guest, we have a video that I'm gonna to ask to uh, roll, uh, and then he will join us here shortly. Can you roll the video? At BP, we use maps across the business, but sometimes finding what you need can be difficult. This often demands sorting through hundreds of sources of geospatial data and information. Whether you work for BP in an office or offshore, whatever you need, OneMap is now your one-stop shop for geospatial information. Enabling mapping, reporting, and analytics. OneMap lets users leverage and share spatial data and information, both static and dynamic, to meet a variety of business needs. From simple base maps to advanced analytics, the possibilities are limitless. It has a variety of ready-to-use map layers, such as imagery, infrastructure, subsurface, industry surveillance, environment, and other countless resources. OneMap is the global mapping solution for all teams, regions, functions, and disciplines. It is for you. The platform can be accessed by anyone with a BP login, anytime, anywhere, instantly. Leverage desktop tools, mobile apps, and web-based browsers. You can even mark your favorites for easy access. As the platform continues to evolve with your data, the uses grow exponentially. Log in today, make it your own. The solution is yours. One platform, all functions. One map. Good morning. Hope you enjoyed the short animation on our platform at BP. And thank you for having us back to Pug again. We were here three years ago, and we shared with you our vision for taking digital mapping to every desktop. Two years ago, we shared with you our plan and our progress. Today, I want to share with you a little bit about what we've achieved. So in this new platform, our focus was enabling 
geospatial data and analytics, a sustainable capability across the entire business. And in BP, what that means is people, process, and technology. As we started thinking about standard processes and getting our people working in a consistent way, we very quickly realized a common platform was required. Before, as we used GIS, we used it differently around the world. We had different versions, we had different approaches, different maturity levels, and we really needed everybody to have access to the same kit so that we could share those same ideas, those same processes. So we really took a platform approach, and that's important. And that was actually very different to previous endeavors. Typically, as we rolled out GIS in the past, it was for a particular business case, a particular team, a particular application or workflow, a button that did a certain thing. We did not go that route. Instead, we wanted a platform that could work for any team. We knew most of the workflows we had to support, but we knew if we tried to go at each workflow individually, we'd be doing this forever. So instead, we stepped back and we said, we needed to interlink with our systems of record. We needed to have mobile capability. We had to be able to support the analysis the business needed. We needed to connect to big data systems and real-time streams. We also have the Internet of Things coming at us. There's sensors going everywhere. We needed to be able to deal with all of our static data, all of our real-time data, and all of our historical data so that we could actually let the business answer any question they needed to answer. But out of all these things, probably the most important is we wanted accessible to everybody. We wanted anybody in the company at any time to be able to click and instantly get into information about where they operate. So how did we deploy this? We went globally. We have deployed our kits worldwide to every office in the upstream business. You heard earlier that, that Esri is cloud, it's hybrid, it's local, it's global. We're actually using all of that. To support all the different cases we have, we have a mixture of cloud-based deployments. We have internal central deployments that share reference information out to all the portals. And we have local portals in country. Everywhere you see a little icon there, they got a full kit. And a kit to us is what's at the bottom right an SDE, a server, and a portal. Obviously, that's simplified. There's lots of other tools and technologies behind our platform. But each one of these got that. And the reason for that is we had to support every business process. And if I had a crisis event going in Angola, the team working that event is going to be in Luanda, not in Sunbury, not in Houston. I needed the information next to the data that was being generated to support that process. If I'm sitting in um, Australia, those guys down under, that connection's far away from our corporate offices. Just the, just the latency alone will kill you on getting information loaded in and information back. So we went with a mixture to make sure the platform had the functionality we needed, but also the accessibility and the performance for all of our users. So why? Why do this? We've been using GIS and BP since the 80s. Quite successful in many areas of the business. Great output being created, maps all over our walls. Um, but really, the access was restricted to those specialists, those people with the fast machine and really knew how to get into ArcMap and create that type of output we needed. Yes, I could share MXDs and I could print maps, but the distribution of that information was actually quite limited. You only get to a small subset of your users. That also created a massive amount of duplication in information. People would grab the data piece they need, drop it to their C drive, pre present that map, and off to the next problem. You go back and try to get that map, you can't because half the data is on somebody's team drive area or their C drive area. So this really allowed few people to experience analytics in your GIS platform, which, of course, is a limited impact for the business. So what did we, what did we change? We didn't do a wholesale change. We still use ArcGIS desktop. We still print maps. We still share MXDs. But we put a little more structure to our back end. We've deployed our SDE environment around the world to give people a place to actually start to manage their data more consistently. We didn't force a bunch of standards on them. We just said, hey, here's a new container you can use. Much, much better than that uh, file system. Faster, more secure, backed up. So that gives us a way to access our data better. Um, but it also gives us a way to audit and track and apply quality rules once you have it in a database environment. On the other side, however, is the bigger change. So again, printed maps, MXDs, they're still there. But now we can produce services. And in BP, we give that option to every single employee. Anybody who wants to publish a map service for any scenario has the ability to do that. And what that has done is drive a massive uptake of this platform. Because people before, you know, my data, I don't want to share my data, I want to do it, I know how. 
We let them do that. And what that does is drive your adoption so much faster. We do have some data sets that are managed. We have some processes that are standardized. But using a platform should not be locked down. So it's wide open. Making those services, that lets us get data to our subsurface toolkit. That lets us get data out to Spotfire and BI and other tools. And that lets us get data out to the portals. And as you know, once you're in the portal, you've got dashboard options. You've got web app options. You've got all kinds of other ways to distribute that data. If you think about that, I've now taken that great information that all of our business people around the world are creating, and it's available to the whole company instantly. You publish a service, those guys in Australia, those guys in Luanda, and those guys in Houston can look at the same data at the same time. You can even use those services directly in your portal if you need to. So pretty exciting now that I can manage data once, and anybody in the company can get to it. So collaboration between our regions. You've got an expert sitting in, in the Middle East who's, who's, an, who's the guy you've got to pull in on this drilling project in GOM. Before, you're sending data around, you're remote desktoping in, it's hard to get to information. Now they can actually just open a map. So right there from their browser. This has led to much less duplication in our information, because now I have performant access to the data I need. It's actually opened up analytics to everyone. So anybody can publish a service, anybody can build a web app, anybody can use these tools. Um, that impact overnight, completely different. Everybody, people are creative, people are curious, people will get in there and produce great content, just like they did in the desktop world. But you've got to give them access to the tools to do it. And so this common platform has allowed us to achieve that. So platform, people, process, technology. So what's next? We're not done. We're still learning as we go. Esri's technology is still evolving. You've heard some of that this morning. Probably the next big thing for us is going mobile. And we're not going mobile just with one workflow or, or one business process. We're going mobile with the entire platform. So all of our portals worldwide available to any desktop, any mobile device, anywhere, anytime. So this basically allows me for my phone to log in and check some information if I need to. I can use the dynamic web apps from my portal. I can use Collector Explorer as a native app if I need to. I want to connect and let people do whatever they need to do wherever they are in the world. And I think that's pretty powerful for your GIS, because the reality is most of the information you're creating as a company is being created in the field. And those people, when they're in the field, they want to see themselves in that data. So mobile access is, is pretty key for our platform. I wanted to close out with this question, because we get this asked all the time. Esri asked us to speak to it. How did we do it? Well, we had millions and millions of dollars and hundreds of people working on this. Actually, that's not what happened. We had a team of about five people that deployed all of our portals worldwide. They managed all of our reference data sets, published them, and pushed them to all the portals in our company. We've done this on a very low budget, very efficient deployment. And in the past two years, we've already upgraded our entire company two times. We started at 10.2, we went to 10.3.1, we're currently on 10.4.1. Next month, we plan to go to 10.5.1. So it's, we're moving a little quicker than a typical deployment. We're able to do that because we took a platform approach. We said we needed a baseline, and we needed it to be the same everywhere. What that means is a central team can log into any system anywhere in the world and make the changes necessary to pull it up a level. So it's pretty exciting to see how well the platform approach has worked. It hasn't been easy. Your IT organizations are not designed to deploy platforms. They're designed to deploy solutions with a user manual that tells you exactly what they're going to support. When you deploy a platform like GIS, there is no cookbook. There is no user manual, because you don't actually know what your users are going to do. The number of workflows that have come up that we had no idea we'd be working on, it's just incredible. We're now doing real-time tracking of seismic operations and doing progress to plan, collision avoidance, deviation to plan. That wasn't part of our original design. But because we can handle the dynamic data, because we can do the geofencing and alerting, and because that tool is available there in that country where that job is running, we can now deliver that capability. So it's pretty impressive what you can do when you go platform. It's not just about technology. As we said earlier, it's about you. We had to have process and people. So process, that scary word. I hate it. I don't like writing documents. I don't like standard processes. But in reality, a company like BP, we have to have some things locked down. We've got to have some process around certain data types. Typically, that drives your whole project. And you lock the whole thing down. It's like, well, it might have something secure, so let's just lock it all down. What we've done is we've put process around things that needed process, and we left the rest open. You want an Oracle schema to start dumping data in? You want to call it my data? 
fine. You want to start publishing services that may or may not be useful? Knock yourself out. If your team leader is happy with that, spend your time. We did not control the platform. What that's led to is users that you never would have thought that have gone in, produced useful content, built a web app, and deployed it, and told us afterwards, hey, look at what we're using. This is great. It's funny, we hear more about our success from others before we ever see what they're doing. So it's pretty exciting to see process managing where we need it and open access where we don't. Lastly, people. It really does take people to make this whole thing work. So we have roughly 80 to 100 geospatial professionals spread across our company. Those are people that are managing data or managing process or administering the technology on behalf of others. For those people, they now have an official discipline home in our company. As of July last year, we now have job titles, job descriptions, and a career ladder. A person can come in from the junior level entry all the way up to some of our most senior technical roles in the company. And that's extremely powerful because now people see they're part of the organization, they understand their skill set is recognized and, and respected, and they can have a whole career with our organization. And that's pretty powerful. Those GIS professionals, they're important to your organizations, but they're just the people dealing with the platform. There's some reference data sets, some master stuff they'll help support for you, they'll keep the tools running. But you, all of you in this room, even if you're just a user, you're part of that ecosystem. And when you start looking at web-based access and, and access at every desktop, the amount of activities and, and projects and, and analytics you can enable, it's, it's really, really exciting. So I encourage you, keep doing what you're doing. This really is the best petroleum jazz conference on the planet. Um, I've been coming here for a little over 20 years, so it's exciting to, to see it continue to evolve and grow and change as the technology and science grows and changes. And uh, really, you can't come to a better place to talk to your peers, learn from them. Um, we, we meet with a lot of you regularly. We learn from you, you learn from us, and that drives the whole system forward. So I really encourage you to, uh, to take advantage of that while you're here. And that's all I have. Brian, thank you so thank much. You. Cheers. Thank you, Brian Bulme. Thank you, BP. That one's hard to summarize. He did such a good job. Uh, you know, the one takeaway that I have, it's interesting, and I know a lot of you know Brian, and I know he would be happy to talk to you out in the halls at the social later on this afternoon. Uh, you should go ask him about some of the interesting things that have happened in this whole process of deploying one map, one map out uh, to the BP organization. There's been lots of surprises. There's been the way that they've enabled uh, the technology and, and the responses they got, got, got from groups that they didn't quite anticipate. Uh, so there's a lot of really interesting examples of that. Um, and it's great to see and hear um, how this stuff is getting pushed out and how it's impacting and changing everybody.